Gas attendant refuses to let woman leave without filling up, gets rewarded. He did his job with a smile and pride. Day in, day out, he worked hard at his minimum wage job just to keep food on the table. But when a woman came into his station with a problem, what he did next would have far-reaching consequences. Not just for him, but his children and the whole family, too. Working as a petrol attendant at a shell-filling station in a third-world country. A pump attendant was not the most glamorous job in the world, but in a country with such a high unemployment rate, he was satisfied with just having a job at all. Kosiko felt genuinely fortunate, but little did he know that his actions were about to change everything. Just another day pumping gas, cleaning windshields, pumping up tires, and checking motorists' oil and water. Some would feel that the pay was not worth the long hours in any and all weather that the mother city, Cape Town, could conjure. Still, he didn't complain, but life was hard. A young woman, Monet Van Deventer, pulled up to Nkosiko's allocated petrol pump. She was on her way to Cape Town when she suddenly realized that her petrol light was blinking red. She was dangerously close to running out of gas and being stranded on the side of the highway. Her situation got worse. As Nkosiko waited patiently, watching the young lady's windscreen, she rummaged through her purse and then her whole bag. But Monet's bank card was nowhere to be found and a cold chill ran through her as she realized her predicament. Ahead lay one of South Africa's most dangerous highways, the N2. As a single female, she knew that she couldn't afford to get stranded. What was she gonna do? The N2, also known as the road to hell by locals, is widely known to be one of the most dangerous highways on Earth. Mountainous areas, blind rises, and hairpin terms make the drive harrowing enough, but it also has a reputation for being a criminal hotspot. Fear gripped Monet as she remembered the recent news stories of those unfortunate enough to have stopped on this highway, and her stomach churned. The criminals who look for their victims on this particular stretch of road had devised a cunning scheme in order to get motorists to stop on the highway so they can make off with their car and valuables. And the highway patrolmen are not immune to their brazen attacks either. Monet remembered the story of an off-duty policeman who had disappeared on this very road just a few weeks prior. Now she was starting to panic. The suspects were known to place large rocks in the road, usually on a blind corner, so the driver would have no way of avoiding them. With their tires damaged, the motorist would have no choice but to stop, and then the criminals would strike. Monet was already an easy target as she was a young female driving alone, but she could only pray that she wouldn't become another statistic. Feeling panicked at how far her empty car would get her and a bit sheepish, she began apologizing profusely to Nkosiko for wasting his time. Fears raced through her mind as she thought of possible outcomes for her fatal mistake, and she knew help was far, far away. But what happened next set everything into play. Suddenly, Nkosiko was moving, walking around the car until he was out of view. His next move made headlines. Surprised by his generosity, Monet accepted graciously. She had no choice though, really, because Nkosiko had already pumped R100 in and paid on his own bank card. No, ma'am, you can't run out of fuel on the N2. It is too dangerous, he said, matter-of-factly. I'll throw in R100 and then you can just bring back my R100 whenever you're near again, Nkosiko assured her. Unbelievably, he didn't even ask for her number or name, but Nkosiko's story was just beginning, and so was the backlash. Amid a thousand thank yous, the woman drove off, promising that she would be back soon to repay him. That random act of kindness has changed Nkosiko's life forever, but still, all he has to say about it is, I didn't care about the money. Saw the gratitude in her eyes and saw that she appreciated what I did, it made me happy. Monet did just as she promised and she was back the very next day with Nkosiko's R100, around $7, but no small change in South Africa, as well as a box of chocolates to thank him for rescuing her the day before, and that's not all. It would be a pretty boring ending if the story ended with Nkosiko getting a box of chocolates. Nkosiko is being rewarded with a serious cash after Monet posted her story on Facebook and set up a backup buddy crowdfunding campaign. In no time, the newspapers had picked up the story, it was all over the radio and thousands of people took to donating anything they could towards South Africa's petrol hero. And you won't believe how much money they raised. The crowdfunding set up in Nkosiko's name accumulated almost half a million rand, and in addition, Shell will also donate half a million rand, over $28,000, to a charity of Nkosiko's choice. That's an amount that's more than eight years worth of his salary. He was even flown to Zanzibar as Shell's poster boy for excellent service. His story will be shared with the Shell Global community to inspire others further. We will also donate around 500000 to a charity organization of his choice to pave the way for many others, Shell announced. <laughs>